Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us to the end of this workers' retreat. Father, we pray that your word will still reach out to our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that we'll be our best for you. Amen. Your name will be glorified. Amen. And we'll do this work to your own satisfaction in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that you'll correct in us everything we've done erroneously. That Lord, you'll lead us and guide us so that we'll do it like you want us to do it. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's read together from John chapter 4. From verse 34 to verse 38. John chapter 4, verses 34 to 38. Jesus says unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true. One soweth, and another reapeth. I sent you to reap, that wherein ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. I want you to notice verse 34. Jesus says unto them, talking to his own disciples. My meat, my consuming desire, and the only thing that satisfies me, like food satisfies the hungry one. That satisfaction or joy or fulfillment is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say challenge to me, I hope to you, that Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, the Lord of glory, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he never acted independent of the Father. That's a great challenge. The angels might not have been surprised if he acted independently because he's been with the Father from all eternity knew what to do. In fact, he was Savior. And he came to save. And he's still Savior. He's come to save. He knew the word of God because it was the word personified. We're told in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. It's that word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And a divine personality like that, the Son of God, the King of glory, the Lord of lords, the Word personified, full of grace and full of truth. And a person who could say, I am the truth, I'm the way, I'm the life. If a person like that will be independent and do what he likes, how he likes, whenever he likes, to whosoever he likes, who can blame him? But he said, my meat, my desire, my joy, the fulfillment of my very life is to do the will of him that sent me. And then he said, on the other hand, I send you. Can you see the connection? The Father sent me. I am sending you. As the Father has sent me, I've laid the example before you. My meat, my joy, my desire, the fulfillment of my life is to do the will of him, not the will of me. The will of him that sent me, and therefore I have no personal goal, personal desire, personal ambition. I have no other thing I want to do independently of him that sent me 
And I want to preach only what he has given me to preach. Now he has sent us. As the Father has sent me, even so have I sent you. What do we learn from him? Your meat should be to do not your will, but the will of him that sent you. The church has got into trouble. I mean the church at large. Because they are trying to do their own will. Not the will of him that sent us. They want miracles at all costs. And when the miracle does not come through him that sent them, they go to magic. They seek for some books. Magical books. Secret occultic books. They're looking for formula. That if God is not ready to work those miracles, if God is not ready to heal the sick through us, then let's look for something so that we can always do something. Strike a match. Bring some stones together. Say some things. Apply some formula that the dead will be raised and all the people in the village, they will come to the church. Not come to God because they won't come through magic. Not come to Christ because they won't believe in Christ through Satan. But just come to church so that the church will be full. And their pride will be fulfilled. And they will be able to say, the blind are seen, the lame are walking, the sick are getting healed. In fact, some of them will tell lies. Somebody that fell down from motorcycle and a person is still breathing, but is in real terrible condition, this fellow will go there quickly. I will say, he has died, he has died, he has died. But I will pray. And this man that he says has died is still breathing. And then he prays, praying, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name. Amen. Look at him, look at him. He's breathing already. God has worked me. I told you, telling lie. He has raised the dead. And he comes back to the church and said, Did you know what happened on Wednesday evening? I was just going on the way like this. And I saw a man, terrible accident, and the man died just like that. But I said, I must do something. That miracle part that I got, I must use it. And I got there and I saw the man. He was totally dead. And I began to pray. Oh, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And that man got up. And those deceived people called deeper life, they begin to clap. They are saying amen already. And uh, they go and tell everybody we are raising the dead here. And it's all a lie. Lie. They want to do their own will. They're looking for something like magic that will deceive people. So they will come. That's why they never get born again, they never get converted. You didn't come to Christ. You can't come to Christ through lie. Or through magic. Or through deception. You cannot come to God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved without having the real tools that you ought to have. And you will never be given the tools except God has approved you that he sent you and you are doing his will not your will Jesus Christ is shown us the example and he said I have come to do not my will but the will of him that sent me and the Lord has sent us of course you've never seen the Lord I don't think there's anybody here that will want to tell lies and say that as I went to the village, 
I wasn't directed by any state overseer, any general superintendent. Jesus Christ himself, he came to me like this, on the way to Damascus. Did you know there is a Damascus in our state? And I was going to Damascus that day. And Jesus just appeared before me like this. There are people that are saying that. And he will say, I saw Jesus. And people want to go to that place to go and hear somebody that saw Jesus. And when you see this man that says he saw Jesus, doesn't know John chapter 3 verse 3. Doesn't know he must be born again. And he saw Jesus. Doesn't know Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine. He saw Jesus. Doesn't know anything about holy life, holy living. If you ask him and say, can we get to heaven uh, if we don't live above sin? Oh, he say yes. God is merciful. Everybody will get there if we are sincere. And you saw Jesus before like I did. Deceive us. I don't think there are people here that will want to deceive other people. And say that he saw the Lord Jesus Christ directly. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, that's the village to go. That's the town to go. No. God used either the general superintendent to send you on a state, a state overseer. God used the state overseer to send you to a local government area as a district pastor. Or God used the state overseer or the district pastor to send you to a village, a place to go and minister. But whether it's the general superintendent sending you to a state or the state overseer sending you to a town, to a locality, one thing is sure, you have been sent to do the will of God. Not your will. Not your will. Your will may be, I want 1,000 in this church in one month. That's your will. That's not God's will. I am come to do the will of him that sent me. And I'm surprised that Jesus Christ could say that he was bounded only by the will of God, not by his will. And everything he said, he said it by the will of God alone. In, Matthew, in uh, John chapter 12. Verse 49, I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say, and what I should speak. Think about it for a moment. I and my Father are one. And the Jews understood what he meant, that they were equal. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he personally, in all humility, he made himself of no reputation and subjected himself under the guidance, the leadership of the Father. And he came here. Remember, he is the truth. Truth personified. Remember, he was full of truth and grace. Remember, he is the word from the beginning with God. And the word came and dwelt among us. And yet, full of the word, more than any theologian, more than any preacher, more than any communicator, full of the word, he said, I speak not of myself. I won't even write an outline and use that outline if the Father does not sanction that outline. Jesus, Son of God, equal with the Father, full of truth, full of grace, the one that is called the living word, will not say anything, preach anything, talk anything, except by the commandment of the Father. What a challenge. And there are some of you here. Maybe you went to ordinary IBTC. What did they teach you at IBTC? It's not up to the, a drop of water in the mighty ocean of truth. 
What did you what did you learn? What did you know? Nine months at IBTC compared with eternity that Jesus had been with the Father with all from all eternity. And he said, I will not say anything except by the commandment of my Father that sent me. And because of ordinary IBTC. And we say, use this outline and talk to the people on repentance. No, I know it all. Me to use outline, outline, what is outline? Throw it away. What did I go to IBTC for? I had the word. I am full of doctrine. And I'm full of the word. He has gone astray. Put the state representative, state overseer, over a state. And we say, state overseer, look at it. Complete study series. Never part with it. That book and your Bible, those outlines are there. Teach them. Me, complete study series, state overseer of all people. When I have the word and the grammar, and the authority and the ability to put it across throw it away I'm able to even write my own complete study series myself see that now these are the cassettes coming from the headquarters and in all the states state capital district local government area everywhere now let all these tapes go out so that will know that we're listening to the same message. And somebody will say, what am I going to do with all those tapes? What is in those tapes that I have not preached myself as a state overseer in this state? Come on, do you know where they buy duplicate of cassettes? Oh yes, let's get our own. And the messages I am preaching to the one I authorize reproduce them and said so this is our state here uh, uh, Lagos headquarters or Lagos something well they are doing their own we are doing our own this is deeper life of this state that one is deeper life of Lagos let them do their own let us do our own and they begin to distribute other cases because am I not knowledgeable enough now as a state overseer to have my own tape ministry. I don't know. Wasn't Jesus knowledgeable enough to have his own messages? Why should he say, My will, my meat, my ambition, my desire, the fulfillment of life for me is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish not my work not my ministry you know I'm surprised when some people say my church my workers my car and his church car didn't pay anything on that thing my car my house my everything my the workers are his All the property of the church, they are his. My organ and his church organ, everything mine. And Jesus said, Father, they are thine. You gave them to me. And I return everything to you. That these people will know you, the only true God, and him that you have sent. You see Jesus? You see where we are? And I say local pastor somewhere pastoring 70 people. And that pastor forceful, dynamic, authoritative and he will say all you 70 people sit down here. They say we shall come for one retreat. They think that I don't know everything yet. They say we shall come for one retreat at a state capital. Well, we... I am going. But all of you what, do you, what do you need to go to state capital for? All that I am teaching you. Is it not enough? My people, answer me. Is it not enough? They say it's enough. Okay, sit down. I will go and see what they are saying at the state capital. And I will come back to report to you. And then he comes to state capital. And every time somebody is preaching, 
saying yes, that's right. That's right. When somebody rises up and he says something and says uh, in Jesus' name and prays, not like he will pray in the village, he will say, no, no, that's not the way. Uh, we should say in Jesus' holy, spotless, sinless name. <laughs> not just in Jesus' name. And then he will go back to all those 70 people and he will say, I have come. The reason I didn't allow you to go is that there is nothing they are going to talk there that I don't know already. If you, any of you, all of you that are here, those of you that have only come for three months in this church, if you were there, you can preach better than the state of Asia that was preaching there. It's good you didn't go. But we will just keep the name deep alive. We'll be doing it our own way. We are the original people. Original deeper life in the village. For state capital, forget them. And all those people in that village, they have never seen a single book from deeper life from the headquarters church Lagos. Book? What do they need the book for? I am enough book for them to read. Cassette? What do they want to use the cassette for? All that they are hearing from me every Sunday. Every Wednesday and every is that not enough? That's enough for them. And uh, if they come and they say there are cassettes somewhere, he will not because he's a pretender. He won't say all these things publicly. He'll get all the cases and put them in a corner somewhere. Will never allow anybody to see. He is enough for them. He's their pastor. He's their bishop. He's their apostle. He's their teacher. He's their shepherd. Is their God. But Jesus, look at the example of Jesus Christ. He said, My meat is to do the will of Him that sent me and to finish His work. You know, I pity some people. And they say, just remaining in deeper life as pastor. When am I going to establish my own ministry? Because all this that we're doing now, we're preaching deeper life doctrine for them. It's like an employee. He is just employed. That's the way he takes it. And right now, he is still doing their ministry for them. But he, so he will get home and ask his wife, my wife, you, you see, how the sick is getting healed. See, how we're walking and, you know, already they have become 300. If this were our own and we do it ourselves, eh? when are we going to have our own church, our own ministry? And the wife will say, ah, but this is our church. No, that's not what I mean. It doesn't bear our name now. Just deeper life. Just deeper life. Just deeper life. If they transfer, out of, uh, transfer us out of this place now, another person will take it over. What I mean is that our ministry, where we can never be transferred out, and we are just there as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, as the Almighty, as the All-Sufficient, as the Omnipotent, as the one that is sitting on the throne, and nobody will ever dethrone us. That's what I mean. Our ministry. And if the wife tries to say, ah, my husband, don't think like that. Don't talk like that. You don't want to support my ministry. I will divorce you. You go and marry deeper life. And the wife will say, ah, don't do like that. Oh, I'm for you. You want ministry? So that you don't divorce me. Anywhere you go, go. Let us go. He knows that you have swallowed a devil. So he doesn't, she doesn't want to confront the devil that you have swallowed. But Jesus. And if you are not following Jesus, how can you ever make it? You'll never make heaven if you don't follow Jesus. The humility. You know, it's a challenge. That he said, my will, my meat, my ambition, my goal, my enjoyment is to do the will of him that sent me. Not only that, and to finish not my work, but his, his, his work. 
And then he said, I got a commandment from the Father. What I should say and what I should speak. And many times you have come to meetings like this. And you have got a commandment. Yes, from God, but you didn't see God directly. You've got that commandment through the people that have led you to the Lord. And you are part of this church. What you should say and what you should speak. We didn't tell you that every day that the people come together, you'll be talking on healing. That's your own. They come on Sunday, healing. They come on Tuesday, healing. They come on Friday, healing. We didn't tell you that that one is your own personal will. Self-will. Your own obstinate attitude that says, this is the way I'm going because I want all the people to come. And you never talk about restitution again. We never told you that. That's your own will. You never talk about repentance again. When you see the large crowd that is there and you say, what? So there is a crowd like this in town. I don't want them to ever go back. And if I talk about polygamy, all these people, half of them will run back. Then you go out to the car park and you see those vehicles, Peugeot and Volvo, and you say, what? These people are coming to our church? Wonderful. <laughs> those Peugeot that you see there is stolen good and stolen money. <laughs> those people... You see a young person that just rises up and then opens that door and you say, my, when did you get this? Ah, <laughs> well, he says, I've been trying. He's been trying. When he gives his life to the Lord, you won't see that Pidio again. You won't see that Volvo again because he has to make right his way. All the things that were stolen, that ju was jumbled together to buy that thing, he has to give it up. But, you know, if you tell him that, he may run away. Therefore, you say, with all your stolen property, come. Second wife, come. Third wife, come. Everybody, come. No restitution again. No repentance again. No conversion again. We are now just congregation. Congregation. Church. There's a church here. There's a church there. There's another church there. Everyone now, church. Just church. Church. Sele is church. You know Sele? How many of you know Sele? Raise up your hand. It's church. UCC is church. How many of you know UCC? Okay, it's church. Your own two, church, like them. No restitution, no repentance, no conversion, no salvation. You are now doing your own will. You preach prosperity and healing casting out devil being happy now there's happiness seminar for one month there is children for the barren and for everybody seminar a whole month there is promotion plenty prosperity the whole month and after that there is a life, good life, not eternal life, good life. How many of you want to live good life? Come for seminar. Won't you like, those of you who are here now, won't you like a good life? Happy, never sorrowful, never unhappy, eat all you want, dress all you want, have all the money you want. How many of you want it? I want, okay, go and tell the people at home. This whole month, the pastor here is not going to talk about any other thing. Look, tell them, if they are saying that, ah, I don't want to go to deeper life, they will talk about repentance. Tell them we have changed. We are not like that again. If they say, ah, you want to get me to deeper life, all those people, they won't allow me to rest and put all my lipsticks and my fingernails and palm. I tell them that we have changed now. We are not like that. It is. That's before, before, before. But now, 
were good, good people. So tell them to come. And the people say, okay, I will try. I will try. Hope they will not drive me away by... I, I used to know deeper life. Oh. I don't think I will go. Come. And that person comes. And true. That Sunday, the clapping, the rejoicing, the laughter, the happiness. The woman said, I didn't know this is how it is. If I knew, I would have called everybody. This is our church now. It's no more your church. <laughs> we used to think that it's your church, it's your church. Now we are all together. Go and call them. Can I call prostitutes? Call them. Won't you disturb them and condemn them? No, we don't condemn anybody anymore now. We just tell everybody now how to be happy in whatever situation in life they are. God has given us the key for happiness. And they all come. And when the trumpet will sound, that church will say, large church. If anybody goes, it will be just somebody that is a worker there listening to Kese from Lagos. The overseer himself might still be here making people happy when we have gone. And the pastor and the zonal leaders and all those area leaders that are deceiving people will never tell them about restitution. You are being born again so you don't run away. All of them, they will be here when we are gone. And all those prostitutes and all the big, big men having their cars, they will all be here. We would have gone. And when we have gone like that, and you see, you hear that the Lagos uh, people, that they have gone. And some people in the church, some workers in the church, that will say no. All that thing the pastor is saying, that now we are free to palm our air. I will not do it. And the pastor said, you will not be a worker. You are rebellious. You are disobedient. You are still following old, old doctrine. You will never work. Those people, they will go. The ones that are saying all these things that they are saying. Everybody now become rich. Everybody become rich. And now God wants everybody to be rich. I will not follow that. I will follow the Lord. Those people, they would have gone. But the workers that are all the time going around campaigning and saying, you are not following what our pastor is saying. Don't you know that this is a new uh, happy life? You don't want to be happy. You want to be sorrowful, Christian. Sober, sober, sober. That's what you are carrying about. You are still quoting Bible. Be sober, be vigilant. Ah, we have gone beyond Bible now. We have come to new revelation. You see, see down there. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil. The devil is no more adversary now. Doesn't trouble us. We have not heard of the devil now for... Thank God, all we are hearing now is Jesus, Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, healing, raising the dead. We don't hear of, G of uh, Satan again. Thank God, we are now the real church. You don't want to change? Who say no? All this uh, clapping and laughing and all that. Well, people are living in sin. It's bothering me. I'm not happy. Those people, they will go. And then the happy ones, happy prostitutes, Happy hypocrites. Happy pastors that are not teaching the truth anymore. They will be here. And when we have gone over there. Because I know I will be there. It's not just by saying it. I can say it 1,000 times and I will not be there. If I don't do what will make me to be there. So just, just saying, uh, making positive confession. I will be there. I will not be left behind. Ah, that one doesn't work. Oh. Doesn't work. Judas can repeat it 1,000 times. I will go. I will be there. He will not be there. Saul, so, the first king of Israel, go and destroy the Amalekites. And he didn't destroy all of them. And was patching up, patching up. He can repeat it a thousand times. I will be there. It's a lie. But <laughs> that day, when we get there, and I will look around, and I will see if all of us, as many as we are here now, if you are sincere, if you are true and genuine believers, we will know. If you are following the will of Him that sent us, we will know. 
And all these statistics were given us. 2,000 in our church. 500 in our church. We will see now, when we get there, and if out of 500 in your church, only 10 people are there, we will see. If out of 2,000, only 50 people are there, we will see. And your work will be burnt with fire. When all those people are over here at the Great Tribulation, and they are suffering and suffering, and they begin to curse the pastor. When the locusts are biting them, when they are feeling the pains, when the darkness is all over the face of the earth, when the wars and the terrible things are happening at the time of the great tribulation, they will be cursing that pastor that did not tell them the truth. They will say, I was in that church. They call it Deeper Life Bible Church. For three years, they never told me how to be born again. They only, told, they only told me how to be happy now and look at me suffering now. And they will be cursing that person. And they will say, God, will you take that man to heaven who has made us to be suffering like this and didn't tell us the truth? That God, you are a righteous judge. A man that had opportunity and preached 52 times a year and never told us, ye must be born again. And now we are left back here. Will he go? No, God is a righteous judge. He's a righteous judge. If that man is insincere, if that man is deceptive, if that man is only having the sense of bringing people together and he knows the truth, he will not tell them. He knows about being born again, he will not tell them. He knows about transition, he will not tell them. He knows about giving their lives to the Lord, completely consecrated unto him, he will not tell them. When the trumpet has sounded, and for Jesus, we are waiting. That's the song we have just sung now. And we are waiting for him. For Jesus, we are waiting. Because the trumpet shall sound. And then it will be us and Jesus living ever with our God. That is if you cannot get to stanza 6 until stanza 1. Jesus is our message. Until stanza 2. Jesus is our savior. Until stanza 3. Jesus is our sanctifier. And Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our power. Then and for him we are waiting. If he is our message. If all in all, that's what we stand for. If he is Savior, that's the chorus. And the healer, and the sanctifier, and the baptizer, and the coming king. If we have gone all through that, then we are waiting for him. And when he comes, when he comes, then it's those people that will go. And those who have been deceiving people. Deceiving people. Deceiving all those rich men. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Come and sit down sit here, sir. Well, I just came to deeper life to find out if I can be a member of this church. Yes, sir, you can be a member of this church. What do I have to do to be a member? I had some of your young people told me I must have to repent. They told me something like restitution. They said that in your church you don't have two wives. No, sir, they are young, young people. They don't understand. You are a member already. What's your name? What's your address? Put everything down. All those deceiving pastors. When Jesus will come. And we are gone. Oh, that day. Will be a day of surprises. And some of the people we have respected and listened to. Preaching in retreats. Preaching in churches, preaching in seminars, leading Bible studies. And we're so sure that when we get there, we'll find them. But the righteous judge, the righteous judge, who is no respecter of any persons, who says, Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And that all liars, all deceivers, all hypocrites that deceive people with. They are preaching. And it looks like they are preaching the Bible. But they are not really striking at the real thing in the Bible. All that shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. And we'll look for them one by one. And we'll be looking for you too. We'll be looking for you. Because you say you are workers. That's why you are here. And when he has come. Only the people that do the will of him that sent them only them will be there I don't know for you 
Maybe you are here, you, you are called IFL. That's why you are here. But you happen to be a worker. But by what standard are you a worker? The same standard that the other people are workers or by a special separate standard just for you. They have given you so much allowance, so much concession. All these other young people that you see here, if they are divorced and remarried, nobody will make them a worker. But you are, but you have special concession. Not from God, from man. All these people that you see here, if they are still smoking and drinking, chewing tobacco, they don't have evidence that they are born again, that their lives have changed. If we don't have evidence that these young, young people, young, young people, school start holders, primary school leavers, if we don't have evidence that they are in Christ, new creatures, old things have passed, the world things have become new, nobody will make them workers. But it's not grace that has qualified you to be workers, but money. Because you have money. Some deceive, deceiving pastors have made you a worker. And they say, IFL, that day will prove it. I don't know you. How can I send you out? God knows that if I knew you, I will send you out. I'm telling you. God knows that if I knew that there is somebody here living in sin and came into the workers meeting because of money, because of education, because of being a professor, God knows that I won't waste time if I knew. He knows my heart. And I am not afraid to make anybody angry or unhappy. If I knew, I'll send you out. That you don't have a change of life. That even though you are born again, you may even be born again, you argue with any part of the word of God and you say, I don't accept that holiness or sanctification. God knows if I knew you, I'll just tell you that stay outside, you cannot be a worker in this church as long as there is a leader at the headquarters church of deeper life that is still supervising everything. Yes, I know. You can pull back the people that you brought in, but I'll still send you out. But the people that will not send you out, those who are nice, looking for your money, and they say, stay there, don't mind him. He's an eccentric preacher, like they said, Jesus had Beelzebub, and they leave you there. Oh, that glorious day. And it's nearer than you think. The day of the coming of the Lord. Look at the world. The wars and the rumors of wars. Look at the world. The changes of government. Look at the world. The turmoil. The disturbances. The divisions. The strife. The world is about to end. It will not be long. Within a short time, the Lord will appear in the sky. Oh, the people that are holy. The people that love the Lord. The people that have turned their backs on the world. And they have said, I'll not go back again. They may not be many, they may be few. But when the Lord will come, when the trumpet will sound, let's pray. Will you be ready? Are you doing your own will? Have you repented? Have you made a restitution? You say fighting and quarreling and you say you are a child of God, you are a worker. 